Hi, I'm Nelson from Dundas. This video tutorial is just one of the videos that we'll be producing to help you understand the features and benefits of Dundas Dashboard. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use filters to define or limit what's displayed on a dashboard, and also to allow users to customize the information they want to see. There are a variety of filter wizards throughout the Dundas Dashboard interface. You can also define filters for virtual tables and dimensions. We're going to focus specifically on the filters that you can apply to a KPI in this video. Let's start by creating a new KPI in the Tutorials folder called 4.04 Filtering. For this example, we're going to use the same Revenue and Expense virtual table that we used in the last example. Let's select Revenue as our measure, leave out the contextual metric, and then select Month as our instant dimension. Let's click on Finish to close this wizard. There are two areas within a KPI where you can define filters. You can define filters for a measure, or you can define filters for a KPI dimension. You can define filters on a measure if you want to limit the dashboard to only display certain measure values or a range of measure values. For example, we could limit this dashboard to only display months where revenues are greater than 150,000. You can also define filters on a KPI dimension. In this example, for instance, we can limit our dashboard to only display revenues for months in 2009. The first place where you can define a filter for a KPI is in the Measures tab. Let's go to the top where you can see our revenues measure along with a column called Measure Action. The button in this column allows you to set up measure attributes, including a filter. The first screen allows you to define how empty or null data points are handled. For instance, if we have a row in our table that has a month value with no corresponding revenue value, you can simply display zero or use a number of averaging methods. The next screen allows you to define a measure filter. So first, click on Enable Measure Value Filtering to enable this filter. There are two kinds of filters, private and public. If you don't click on public, this becomes a private filter that simply limits the measure values that will be displayed on the dashboard. Dashboard designers will not be able to access this filter and dashboard viewers will not be able to customize it. You can limit these values by selecting a single value, say 150,000. Or you can limit these values by selecting a range, say starting from 150,000 or starting from 150,000 and ending at 200,000 or simply ending at 200,000. If you click on public, this filter will ultimately be exposed to the dashboard designer who can use this to create a filter that the dashboard viewer can use to customize what values they want to see. If you select all member allowed for public selections, dashboard viewers will be allowed to click on all, which will effectively show them all the values for this measure. In this example, we're not going to apply a measure filter, so let's just hit cancel. Now, let's head over to the dimension tab where you'll notice the instant dimension that we selected in the wizard, month. In the action column, there are two buttons. The first one allows us to configure the filter for this dimension, and the next one allows us to replace this dimension with a full featured time dimension, like the one we built in our time dimension video tutorial. We'll show you how to use this feature in a later video. For now, let's configure the filter for our instant dimension, which is month. Let's select public to make this a public filter, and we'll also allow users to select all months. We're going to make this a range selection. Notice that since month is a date and time field, we now have date and time selectors. Let's make our start date January 1st, 2009, and our end date October 1st, 2009. Now that we've finished configuring this filter, let's hit finish to close this wizard. Notice in the field attributes column that we now have a few additional icons. The first one tells us that this instant dimension is rendered as an axis for this KPI. The second one tells us that a public filter has been applied so end users can select their own filtering values. The A to B icon tells us that this filter allows us to select a range of values. And the last icon tells us that no restrictions have been placed on this dimension. 
Let's have a look at our KPI by going to Parameters and Preview, and then clicking on Preview. You'll notice since we've limited the date range for our dimension filter to 2009, the values that are shown below start from January 2009. You can also see the filters that are being applied to this KPI in the KPI Query Filters section at the top. You can also modify the filters from this screen so that you can preview the results right away. Let's reconfigure this filter and change the start date to January 1, 2007. If you click on Preview Data, it will refresh the query to reflect this change, and you can now see that our data points start from 2007. Let's check in this KPI. The parameters or filters that we've created are now available for the dashboard designer to implement on a dashboard. That concludes this video tutorial. Don't forget to click on this screen's links to access additional tutorials, our online demo, or to download a full evaluation copy, all available on www.dundas.com. Thanks, and I hope you enjoy Dundas Dashboard.